Everybody, welcome to Intermediate Accounting 17th edition video solution walkthrough for Kiso, Weingant, and Warfield. Uh, this is exercise 19.4. Uh, the textbook authors are Don Kiso, Jerry Weingant, and Terry Warfield. The question used in this presentation is copyright 2019 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. This solution presentation is copyright 2019 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are those of Bennett Tchaikovsky, not the authors of the textbook or of Wiley. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our question here. So right over here, that we're gonna do this a little bit differently than the way the book has done it, but we're gonna to come to the same solution. So um, Zurich Company reports pre-tax financial income of $70,000 for 2020. So we have Zurich pre-tax. And this amount is 70,000. Okay. So the following items cause taxable income to be different than the pre-tax income. So depreciation on the tax return is greater than the depreciation on the income statement. So this is a temporary difference. This is depreciation expense. So this over here is going to be 16,000. So it, this is my pre-tax income. If the depreciation is greater on the taxes, that means I'm going to be paying $16,000 $16, less when it comes to this. Now, this is gonna generate a deferred income tax liability. We're gonna go through that and go through that and do that deal with that momentarily. Okay, rent collected on the tax return is greater than the rent recognized in the income statement by 22,000. But that means I got the cash now but it's a prepaid or a deposit or something along, probably it's prepaid rent. So if it's prepaid rent, that's gonna be sitting uh, on my uh, financial statements as prepaid rent. But for tax purposes, we're gonna recognize the income. So this is gonna increase my pre-tax financial income by 22,000. So right over here, rent collected, let's call it prepaid rent. And then lastly, we have fines for pollution appear as an expense of 11,000. We talked about there are some permanent differences when it comes to certain types of fines. So over here, this is gonna be a permanent difference. And I'm gonna add back 11,000 for tax purposes. This is a temporary difference. So my taxable income is going to be the 70 plus less than 16 plus 22 plus 11 or eighty seven thousand dollars so right over here what we're going to go ahead and do is my tax rate is going to be at 30 percent so once i have this tax rate over here my income taxes payable are going to be eighty seven thousand times uh, 30% or 26,100. Now, when we're going through and preparing the journal entry, we're going to go ahead first and record income taxes payable of, of 26,100. Now, the other part of this we're going to go ahead and do is normally what I'd be doing is I would be recording income tax expense current, and I'd be showing this over here, uh, 26,100. That's gonna be my normal natural instinct in terms of this question. Okay, so this is, how, this is what we have so far. And again, my wanting to do this is really going down to the disclosure on the income tax expense section of the income statement where we're gonna break it out between current and deferred. Now, the next thing I need to do is to kind of look at these temporary differences, right? The permanent difference is not gonna make a difference, but this prepaid rent is gonna give me a deferred tax asset, 
right? And this is because this is going to be not have to be recorded as income in a future period. So over here, this is going to give me a deferred tax asset of 6,600. And then over here, so this is the prepaid rent. And then over here, my uh, depreciation expense. This is going to be 16,000. Okay, this is going the other way. This is going to be a deferred tax liability. And this is going to be over here. This is going to be uh, 4,800. So now normally what we would do is we would look at this and say, okay, I'm now going to have income tax expense uh, deferred and it would be over here, but this is a little bit of a different situation. The situation we're right now in is that, well, wait a second, I need not a debit to balance this, but I need a credit to balance this. So over here, I'm going to call this income tax expense deferred. And this is going to be my balancing amount. And it's really the, the difference here between the deferred tax asset and the income tax and, and basically uh, the deferred tax liability or up over here of 1800. So this is what, this is how I'm going through and presenting this as a journal entry. Now, you could also go through and do the way the book does it. The book is showing it like this, 6,600 income tax expense. They would show 26,100 minus 1,800 or 243. Then you would show the income taxes payable, and then you'd have the deferred tax liability. So that part's not really changing. The one thing we're doing differently, though, is we're breaking it out like this, and I'm going to show you the reason why I continue to want to do it this way. When it comes down over here to the disclosure as um, right over here, prepare the income tax expense section on the income statement showing income before income taxes. This over here is gonna be $70,000, okay? This is my pre-tax financial income. When it comes over to this part over here, less, income tax expense current, this is going to be 26,100. And then we're going to have an income tax expense deferred, basically of 1800. So effectively, when I go through and look at this, so my total income tax expense is going to be 24,300. So my net income is going to be 45,700. Now, again, why am I going through and doing it this particular way? It's be essentially because if I do the journal entry like this, meaning I'm going through when I calculate out the deferred in the income tax is payable and I record that income tax expense, I'm then going through and looking at the other accounts like the deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability, and then I might have a income tax expense current or excuse me, defer, whatever I need to balance is gonna be like that deferred income tax expense. I know this looks a little bit strange to see an income tax expense deferred like this, but this is going to be netted out to get us down over here to the income tax expense. So again, this is the way that I'm doing it. The book's doing it a little bit of a different way, but the reasoning behind why I'm doing this is when I come to the income tax expense section, my journal entry that I did over here on 1231.20 is going to help me get down to this result over here. Uh, last thing they're asking you to do is to compute the effective income tax rate. The way I would do this is I would take, well, it's the income tax expense divided by the income before income taxes. So over here, this is going to be 24,300 divided by 70,000. 
So here, my effective tax rate is about 34%. So uh, that's this uh, exercise 14-1. I want to thank Wiley uh, for allowing me to continue to use their uh, problems and to share them with you. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask, ask them. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see other solutions, please feel to ask, feel free to ask for them in the comments. Have a great day.